It's your Catholic Drive Time with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Uh, the battle between hedge fund fund managers and retail stock purchasers uh, that's kind of gone a little crazy. What's behind all of this? But more importantly, is there a Catholic lesson to be learned in all of this? We've invited Mike from Restoring the Faith on our program to conversate about that. Good morning to you, Mike. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me, Joe. Yeah. Honored to be here. Praise be to Jesus. Now, uh, by way of disclosure, you have some background and expertise in, in financial management or investments. Maybe you can give us the, uh, the elevator pitch in your resume. Yeah, sure. Just uh, after I left the Marine Corps, um, went straight to Wall Street, worked for a major investment bank, was an investment banker, which means it's not somebody who manages money, it's somebody who manages corporate finance transactions. So I took a couple companies public, uh, did some capital markets transactions in both the debt and equity uh, markets, as well as mainly I was, a, I was, I was an M&A guy, mergers and acquisitions. So I'd help large companies buy small companies, help small companies get sold to large companies, uh, but usually that involves the exchange of, of um, equities, um, either in a private setting or in a, or in a public setting. So uh, familiar with the capital markets, enough to talk about it, Joe, today, <laughs> but not a trader or anything like yeah. that. Well, speaking of which, uh, Semper Fi, my brother, I got out of the Marine Corps in uh, 95. Hoorah! All right. <laughs> wow. I uh, I knew I liked you. Ah, well, it's early yet. We, let's preserve judgment till the end. All right. So, uh, Mike from Restoring the Faith is our guest. Uh, start, uh, Mike. Could you start by telling us uh, what is the nuts and bolts of the story? What were hedge fund fund managers trying to do, and why were these sort of day trader retail purchasers trying to stop them in doing that? This what we witnessed last week was nothing short of a populist uprising. And here's why I say that. Okay, so th this is a concept that can sound really complicated, but it's really is very simple. You can either be short in a stock or long, and that's that's traders speak for. If you're long in a stock, that means you buy it and you own it, and you hope it goes up, and then you sell it later. The short is just the reverse. You sell it first, and then you buy it later because you're betting against it going down. Now, a lot of people will say that that provides liquidity in the market, and it helps regulate the price of stocks and efficient market theory hypothesis says that all information is known by everybody and so these things all act rationally the problem is is when you're short in the stock you sold something that in some cases you don't have and so that's called a naked short mm. and um you and i joe are not allowed to do naked shorts <laughs> that's you probably a good thing <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing for both of us. Yes. But you and I are not allowed to sell something that we literally don't even have. Right. But the hedge funds can do that. Mm. The hedge funds have that opportunity uh, because they are special. They're qualified investors. They're given a lot more leeway. So they can literally provide downward pressure on a stock like GameStop, like AMC, without ever owning the thing. And so wow. they create the market conditions that they're seeking. They they benefit when the price goes down, but when you sell, 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 which is what they're doing, then that pushes the price down. So a bunch of people on Reddit last week, Joe, they got together and said, "Enough is enough. The people will rise up. We're going to take our stimmy checks and we're going to invest those in uh, in our favorite our favorite stock from our nostalgic days in the you know late '90s, early 2000s when we would go to GameStop and buy the latest video game, and mommy would drive us there, and um." And it worked. They put these major hedge funds like Mercer Capital into a sh what's called a short squeeze. Mm. The price kept going up and up and up. And these guys had to keep putting money in to, to maintain their short position. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's dumb that down for knuckle draggers like myself. So they borrowed stock from someone, but the way they make money is actually by destroying the company, not by building it up. Because buy low, sell high is something we've all heard a bunch of times. But it's the opposite of that. It's sell it cheap, tell everybody it's terrible, don't buy this, it's horrible, drives the stock down. They sell off everything they have for cheap price, then they buy it back for cheap, and then they, they give the, the stocks back for what they originally agreed to and they keep the difference pretty much it's sell high buy low and they want to make sure that they buy low because a lot of these hedge funds do not operate by any ethical or moral principles that you and i would recognize these people like to sift through your trash to find dirt on you <laughs> they like to plant bad news stories in the media they will do anything it takes to drive the share price down including 
um, you know, ha- being incredibly short on the stocks to, to the point in GameStop where th- there was something almost 200 percent of the shares outstanding of the float was in a short position by these mega mega uh, hedge funds. So when the when the when the folks on Reddit and Facebook got together and they said, "Okay, we're all gonna we're gonna take our our stimmies and we're gonna we're gonna go long on this stock." And w- this is a populist uprising. I I did a video about it, Joe, and I was wrong. Okay, because I argued I in the video I said, "Hey, don't buy this stock because look, it's it's obviously in a bubble right now. It's obviously gonna come back down. This is there. This is just an aberration in the market." Um, I got so much hate mail because <laughs> what I didn't recognize was that. These people who are doing this, they don't care about making money, Joe. They really don't care. What they care about is the principle. I even talked to a guy. He's he's a fellow uh, veteran. He's in Ohio, and um, he's got he's got like twenty five thousand dollars worth of GameStop wow. stock right now. Now it wasn't worth that much. He didn't put twenty five thousand in. That's just ha- that's just the run up. Mm. And I said, I said, brother, you need to sell. You need to sell and take your chips off the table. Go buy yourself a truck or something. Right. He said, no, I don't care. This is the principle. I will ride this out, and if I can buy more, I will. All right, hold that thought. We're talking with Mike from Restoring the Faith and uh, YouTube channel. Great. Check it out. We, we'll link to it, obviously, at facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. But don't go anywhere. On the other side of this short break, we'll continue our conversation with Mike. And we're going to get to the Catholic take on this. The, is there a Catholic lesson to be learned from this? Uh, in the last segment, we were, we've been talking with Mike from Restoring the Faith about sort of the nuts and bolts, sort of, sort of the practical elements of the story. But I want to transition a bit to the, the Catholic take on all of this. Um, usury used to be a conversation we used to have in the church quite a bit. Uh, but that seems to have gone away. I'm hoping, Mike, that you can uh, maybe talk about this story as as Catholics. What should we be thinking? Because you know, part of the my thinking goes as a knuckle dragger. I mean, I don't know anything about stocks. I don't even own stocks. I sold my 401k years ago. Got rid of the whole thing. Cashed out of the uh, the casino that is the stock market. Um, is it legal for these hedge funds to do these things? Is it ethical? Is it right? Should they be doing them? And if so, uh, you know, how can we justify that? So I want to get to the Catholic take, Mike, from Restoring the Faith. Okay. In, in any business transaction, we have to be concerned with the common good. And the common good sounds is different and distinct from the collective good. So the collective good is something that a lot, you know, the, the, the lefties like to talk about because it's basically communism. Uh, but the common good is a real thing. And what it means, and if uh, defined by Father Ribiker, for example, is b- basically the, uh, creating a society in which it is possible and permissible and, and uh, encouraged for us to all live lives of virtue. So that's the common good. When you have a business, you should be contributing to the common good in some way. That doesn't just mean paying your taxes, just rendering to Caesar what is due to Caesar's. But that, that, that means providing a product or a service that enhances people's lives and enables them to live lives of virtue. So if you make cars, for example, that's great. People can use their cars to go to mass and get a job and provide for their family. This is all good stuff. Obviously, you cannot produce a product or a service that is inherently or gravely evil. Uh, so you, you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, don't open a, a abortion clinic, for example. You have to ask yourself, though, Joe, what do, to to the common good that what is the contribution of a hedge fund? They don't make anything. They don't sell anything. They don't really do anything besides financially transact in the marketplace. Uh, these these d- derivative and speculative um, investments, and so essentially, what they do is. Uh, they sell things that they don't even have. <laughs> they sell things that they don't even have, and we're not even allowed to do that. And to be an investor in a hedge fund, you have to be what's called a qualified investor, which means you have to have at least a million dollars in liquid net worth, money that you're willing to lose, uh, and you can you, you sign to this attestation. It's very highly controlled to the SEC. So I can't invest. You can't invest. So these hedge funds get access to de- deals, and the, he- the investors of these hedge funds get access to deals that you and I can't get. But here's what, uh, what to your point about usury. They are so focused on your money making money by virtue of the fact <laughs> that it's money. Okay, They expect their money to reproduce like rabbits. <laughs> now, this, as you said, usury was condemned in the strongest terms in the church. If you were to open Denzinger, for example, and just flip to the first reference on usury, you would find that the usurers were denied ecclesiastical burial. Wow. Just like the suicides. 
<laughs> We've done away with that by now, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Imagine being. Oh, there's this is this is where the, all the Catholics are buried, and then over here, this is where the people who committed suicide or usury yeah. are buried. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Even in the like uh, the Old Testament, it was condemned because there was uh, there was a sense of trying to protect those that had less. Right. The haves can't. Uh, can't dominate the have-nots. I mean, even if you owned a field and you were planting grain, you had to leave a portion of that field for the uh, for the for the poor to have access to grain. I mean, so uh, we Precisely. see this accommodated for in the Old Testament, but it's it seems to have gone uh, the you know by the by, as they say here in the in these modern times. Precisely, it, and it's uh, what uh, you know. You've you've always anyone has seen these memes. It's how it started versus how it's going. You know, um, the, uh, when you when you look at the the Robin Hood trading app, love the unironic name for this thing, right? Uh, <laughs> how it started. You know, in 2016, they put out a tweet: "Let the people trade." You know, and then uh, last week it says. In light of market volatility, uh, yeah. we're restricting transactions for certain securities, i.e., GameStop and AMC. Um, and but what they're doing, Joe, is they're allowing the hedge funds to continue to transact, but they restricted trading for you and me. If you're a Reddit user, if you're a little guy, if you're the guy who's supposed to be taken care of by the common good, that little patch of farmland, yeah, you're not allowed to buy in. Sorry. Only only the hedgies can buy in. You can't. So is it ethical for the average Joe or the average Emily to um, <laughs> to participate in this just the way that the GameStop Redditors were just at like stick it to the man in that sense, not to make money? See, uh, here's the thing. We live in a culture that is literally based on usury. Uh, we have a fiat currency that is backed by no gold to our knowledge. Um, we labor under the insidious secret tax of um, of inflation, which is engineered by the central banks of the world. Um, everything we do involves usury. Getting a home mortgage is technically entering into a usurious transaction. Having a credit card, getting a car loan, financing anything is a usurious transaction. So everything that we do is based on usury. I, it's it's uh, This is something that fascinates me because I don't know that we can reconcile you know, 12th century dogmatic uh, statements uh, by the popes um, in their encyclicals about usury to, to how we're living today. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, I think a moral theologian, I think a St. Alphonsus Liguori would look at what people are doing in Reddit hmm. and saying, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take my stimulus check, which is my money that was given back to me by the government, and I'm going to invest it in this stock. Um, some people made a quick buck, and good for them. Some people are doing it for the principle of fighting the system. And um, look, uh, we c you can only labor under tyranny for so long. So I think some the moral theologians would say that it is okay for the average Emily or the average Joe to do it. I just don't recommend doing it personally because um, it's too late. You know, if I, I was on a retreat last week and I missed the chance <laughs> to get in, um, about, and I'm not going to get in. What about the silver now? They're going after silver. It looks like they're they gonna are going working. after silver, um, and I think that that's smart. I I do personally, <laughs> I don't I, I don't give investment advice, but I do personally think that silver is kind of undervalued, especially relative to gold. But that's an interesting topic. I do th I think Catholics should have um, should have physical metals. They should just have it as a even as a downside, and in case that the uh, God forbid the currency should collapse. You know, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was the reserve currency of the world in 1917. Of, of, of Western Europe. Really? And then what happened? World War I, and then boom, they're gone. And they're gone. Done. I mean, we're the reserve currency of the world, and we got the petrodollar and all that stuff, and that's great. But one event like COVID or anything like that could change everything. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a bad idea to have some silver coins. College, you whiz. Uh, Mike from Restoring the Faith, you sound like Klaus uh, von Schwab there from uh, the Great Reset guy from the World Economic Forum with his... Uh, anyway... Uh, I, I, you, we you are said, going to build yeah. back better. <laughs> no, no thanks. Uh, no thanks. I'm trying to cut back. I appreciate it, Klaus, but uh, I'm really trying to cut back. Uh, i got to watch the figure. But uh, I want to go back to something you said a minute ago. I was really thinking about, uh, we are talking about usury. I was thinking about debt and the culture of debt in our society. Uh, you know, as a family, we've been striving over the past 20 years of marriage to get out of debt. You know, college tuition 
It, uh, day one, a uh, freshman shows up to college campus. They have to buy eighty thousand dollars worth of books for the semester. Right? It's a rough. It's right. a rough figure. Just go with me here. And they show up to the uh, to the the uh, the institute approved uh, bookstore to purchase these books, and they're way overpriced. And in the bag at the checkout is a credit card application form. At least how it was when I was yeah, going they to don't college. Do that anymore. And, uh, you know, and I was thinking, I don't even have a job. And you're trying to get me to go into debt? Like, that's insane. You know, and th that's the culture with which we live. So you, you're in debt up to your eyeballs. You have a mortgage. You have, you have to have, you know, the Ford F-150 Raptor payment every month, which is over $1,000. And then you got to have uh, a second car. Then you got the vacation house, the four-wheelers, the boats, the this, the that. And you're in debt up to your eyeballs. And uh, it becomes very difficult, especially with credit card debt to, to, and student loans, to shovel your way out. It seems like a lot of people are being enslaved by this. And here we have our federal institutions just printing trillions of dollars uh, with all of these stimulus bills. Is there any way out, Mike, from Restoring the Faith? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I think, actually, to quote Mother Teresa, live simply so that you others may simply live. Um, it's the, the ideal. The ideal is to have a one income household and where everyone can survive and live, live out their faith that way. Um, the, 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 that the ideal is so, so seldomly attained today because uh, especially young men, as you said, they're, they're leaving college, let's say with a liberal arts degree. Um, and they're saddled with debt. They have to get a car. How are you prepared to carry out your vocation? And then let's say you go to you know, a Catholic university or something and you've, you've studied history or literature and uh, you're prepared to become a teacher. Uh, well, it's hard to it's hard to support an entire, you know, um, an entire family on 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 something like that. Um, and the debt cycle is designed to entrap us, Joe. You have hit the nail on the head. It is designed to entrap us. And every single institution uh, from the from global financial institutions, from the IMF level, from the World Bank level, are designed to entrap not only the the, the third world in debt, but but uh, the little guy in debt. And the banks will always, they don't really bear the risk. That's the dirty little secret. If you read, there's a great book. It's called The Creature from Jekyll Island. It talks about the founding of the Federal Reserve. The bottom line is that the banks really don't, don't take any risk because they will always get bailed out. We saw it happen in the financial crisis. They're getting bailed out now. And even these hedge funds have turned to mommy government last week and said, can you bail us out? Wow. We're, we got in over our skis. We're four, four billion dollars short here. Yeah. My third home is, is at risk here. We got to got to do something to save it. Well, uh, yikes. <laughs> Praise be to God in all things. But uh, I think as uh, as times get crazier, the truth comes out, masks fall off, and we start to see people and institutions and, uh, and agendas for what they are. But uh, we're grateful for Mike from Restoring the Faith to be on our program today to give us the lowdown, the skinny, and the Catholic take. Mike, God bless you, God love you, and thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Joe. My pleasure. All right, that's going to do it for Hour 1 of Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. We'd love to have you join us in the second hour if you are able. We're still live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, so long as the algorithms give us the opportunity. And you can find us by searching for Catholic Drive Time or GRN Online. We are game shows coming up in the next hour. Catholic Trivia with a secret and hidden agenda of teaching you a little bit about the faith, having a laugh in the process, and giving away prizes. All that plus much more Catholic Drive Time coming up in the next hour. God bless you. God love you. We'll see you right back here, 6 a.m. Central, tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.